Hi, and welcome to the Incite My Life video channel. So today we're going to be talking about practice exam one for the Society of Actuaries. So if you're becoming an actuary, I would strongly recommend this book. It's a great book, goes in depth about basically everything that you'll find on the exam P. So let me show you what it is exactly. It is the Actex P1 study manual. Great book, love it. So anyway, let's go over some exam questions from that book. Now, I just want to give this disclaimer here that if you're coming to these videos and you're thinking, well, these videos don't apply to me. I'm not going to be an actuary. I'm not going to go into statistics or probability. And, you know, it doesn't really affect me all that much. <clears throat> well, here's the thing. With the actuary exam P, it uses a lot of topics that are covered in many, many, many levels of math. So there is algebra, there's calculus, there's set theory, there's, you know, obviously probability, and there's graphing. There's everything that you are probably going to experience in an algebra class, and definitely a lot of what you're going to experience in a calculus class that's going to be covered on the SOA exam. So really, if I demonstrate these questions to you from the SOA practice exams, it's not only preparing people for the exam P, but it's also helping people who are in other math classes like algebra or calculus because these same topics are covered. So for instance, uh, we have the first one. This one is covering set theory. Now, um, there are classes that cover set theory a little bit. Uh, I know from uh, the college that I go to, it's called Ideas of Math, and they have a whole section on set theory. So, I mean, that might come up. Typically, it doesn't come up that much, though, honestly. Now, this one, this one is more common. Uh, it's a Bayes' theorem, but uh, the types of things that you have to do are, uh, I would say they're just basic multiplication and addition and division, but... Um, it is covering, you know, more of a probability topic, but then you get down to something like this, to number three, okay, and it has a function that's a, a PDF, which is a probability density function, that doesn't matter though. If you're in a calculus class, you're going to want to watch this one, and the reason being is because this requires integration, and on top of that, it requires integration along with solving a linear or a pair of linear equations. So you're going to want to watch this one because that's going to cover things that you're probably going to see in your uh, calculus classes. Okay, this one, if you're in college algebra or some type of algebra class, you're going to want to see this. This is talking about inverse functions. And then there's also this problem, which is a calculus problem. So in general, this, this whole front page is all basically calculus or probability. And so you're going to find a lot of these problems are very helpful. And I'm going to segment these on the channel. So let's first talk about the first two, which are basically dealing with probability and set theory. So the first one, it says the following. It says, if E and F are events for which the probability of E or F is equal to 1, then the probability of the complement of E or the complement of F equals, and we have our various options here. So the first thing that we have to uh, show here is that the probability of E or F equals 1. Okay, now, if you're like me, I really love visuals, okay, and looking at this can be a little bit cryptic. I mean, what is E and then this and then F? I mean, the U here, this uh, U, it, it literally is a union, okay? So the union of E and F and a union, like if you think of union station or union, like a, a, an agreement or like a coming together of different parts, that's what that is. So the coming together of E and F is one. And here's the rule with probability. All probabilities must add up to one. So that's as big as you can go. You can never have a probability that's two or three. 
all probabilities are decimals. So that means you can have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but at the end of the day, they have to add up to the number one. So that means that this all together is the entire probability space. Now let me show you, to, show you that visually. So let's look at the Venn diagram of this. So a Venn diagram is this kind of cir uh, circular thing and not all Venn diagrams are circles, but this particular diagram is two circles and one of them is going to be E and one's going to be F. So this is going to be E and this is going to be F. Okay, uh, and what this means is that this here, this region out here without this middle region, this is just E. And this out here is just F. And this middle here is E and F. So, um, like let's say you have um, toys, okay? If you have E representing um, red toys, and you have F representing teddy bears, then all, you, all of your red toys are gonna be just here. So just red is over here, and just teddy bears is here, but red teddy bears is gonna go in the middle. So anyway, um, it says that the union of these two parts is one. So the coming together of E and F, or E, I'm sorry, E or F is one. That's how we read that. We read that as or. So this whole space is one then. The, their union is one. So that means that everything has to fit into, into these two parts. Okay, so now let me explain then what is the thing that they're asking for. Because they want to know what is the probability of the complement of E or the complement of F. So what is this, this tick mark? Well, the tick mark is the complement. We call it the complement. Sometimes you might see it written as this, E of C, like that, and then F complement. So sometimes that tick mark can be written as the letter C, meaning complement. So then you're asking, well, what is the complement? Okay, well, let me show you a simple diagram. Okay, let's say that this is our space here. This is our probability space, an A. Okay, so if this is our probability space, and remember I said probabilities add up to one, right? So there's A and then there's this region out here. So together A and this box represents one, or adds up to one. So the complement of this would be the box without the circle in it. So we're gonna call that A complement. See what I mean? So A is here and everything that's not A is on the box. So this question is, what is the union of the complement of E and the complement of F? So if we go back to our Venn diagram, the complement of E would be anything that's not E. So we cover it. So it could be F then. Uh, this the singular region of F okay and then the complement of F is anything that's not F so that's the singular E so there's a formula to represent this okay and I'll just I'll interpret that right for you right now it's the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B, gonna run out of room, but that's okay. And then taking away the probability of A and B. And, and this makes sense, right? Because the probability of A or B is the two coming together, right? But then you might ask, well, what's this all about? Why do we subtract their middle? Well, if we think about it, what's the probability of A? Now don't think of covering it because that's just just E, okay? So I'm sorry, I said A, but I meant E. The probability of E, it does include the singular of E, but it also includes the joint E. So the E's and the F's because, you know, they're shared here. So E is this entire circle with a little bit of F. So that's the entire region of E. And then if we go to F, then it's the entire region including this 
But then what just happened right now? We double counted. We counted this once and then we counted this twice. So this here got repeated. So in order to accommodate that, we take it out. Okay, we take out one of those. That way we only have one in the actual problem. So then let's apply this formula to the complement uh, problem that we have up here. So just, you know, imagine that this is E complement and that's F complement. So then the probability of E complement or F complement is equal to the probability of E complement plus the probability of F complement minus the probability of E complement and F complement. Okay, now that's pretty straightforward. You might think, well, that's it, right? Now let's be careful here because this makes sense, right? Not E is that, right? And then not F is that. But then what's not E and not F? Well, not E and not F is nothing. And since we said that the probability space is already one when it's all of this, then not having that is basically nothing. So it's zero. So this value then is zero doesn't count for anything. So your actual answer is just this part right here. So if we go back to the problem, that would be answer C. All right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.